Hey, what's up you guys? Shardimus Prime here, doing another Marvel Legends action figure top 10 video on my top 10 worst Marvel Legends of 2022. We all have our different emotional attachments to these characters. So to me, when I collect action figures, especially my Marvel figures, it's not just about the figure. There's a character attached to the figure, and that goes into consideration when I criticize these things. Now, uh, one other thing that you need to take note of is that my opinions do change over time and it's not necessarily you know for me getting influenced by one person or another it's more of my own experience with the figure or me learning something about it that i didn't know beforehand so let me give you an example of how your emotional attachment to a figure can change your opinion of the figure overall uh the five pack black suit ultimate spider-man figure over here i think this is one a lot of people don't like or care about or don't have any attachment to but i have an emotional attachment to this particular particular figure because the ultimate Venom storyline is what got me back into reading comic books in my 20s. So I do like having this figure and I know most people don't care to have it, but for me, I am excited to actually own it. And I know I am the odd one out, but again, I have an emotional attachment to the character. So yeah, unlike some reviewers out there that don't read comic books at all, you're getting the perspective of a comic book reader on this channel. Thus, the figure's criticism is going to be swayed by that. Not for any shilling purposes, but for my emotions on how I feel about the character. The Future Foundation inverted Spider-Man figure. I didn't catch the misrepresentation of the figure on the, on the packaging art. So that makes him lose some points for me or something that I just wanted to address that I didn't address in my review. And uh, we'll have some other things that we'll talk about. Howard the Duck, I'm actually happy to have. I know a lot of people are upset about this figure and I don't think he's worth the money, but I am happy to have him on the shelf. Oh, and I have to give an honorable disappointing mention to Darwin and Sleepwalker. Both characters I really like a lot and I'm very happy to have those characters in my collection. However, the execution execution of both of the figures was a bit disappointing. First off, neither of them have any accessories to display their power sets at all, and that really bums me out, man. In both of them, they used much older body molds when they each needed to have a more unique sculpt. Both of them really needed to have their own unique body mold, I think. And yeah, recently I reviewed Gore, and you guys know how unhappy I am with that. All right, let's move on to the top 10. But first, if you're trying to get your bad Marvel Legends, you can do so. Big, big, big. Get your big, badass toys at BigBadToyStore.com. Click the link in the description below. <laughs> So at the bottom of my list, at number 10, I have Riot. This is my favorite figure from this top 10. So yeah, it's at the bottom of the list, and I think the execution of the figure was just really bad. You saw my review, didn't you? If you didn't, go ahead and check it out. But I complained about this particular figure a lot. I don't like the body mold choice that they went with. I don't like how the head sculpt came out. But I am very happy to have the character hanging from the ceiling. So for that, I, I like having the figure, but I am overall very disappointed in this riot. <laughs> Number nine goes to Moonstone, the Walgreens exclusive figure that I don't know who asked for this. I guess if you missed out on the STCC exclusive version, then yeah, I could see you wanting this one. For me personally, I'm more attached to the Dark Miz Marvel look, and I, I know Thunderbolts is very popular, so there could be people out there that are really stoked to have this figure. It does have improvements. The photo real tech on the face looks better, and you do have the pinless double jointed elbows. So because of that, uh, she's not higher on this list, but it still feels like a very light amount of plastic with this figure, and I'm still bummed out that we don't have a Dark Ms. Marvel. Come on, Hasbro, where's that Dark Ms. Marvel? Next is animated Jean Grey, which is my least favorite of the animated X-Men figures. And yeah, there's nothing new that comes with this figure. I had low expectations. I just really was hoping that they would include some new effects for her, for her power set. But no, they didn't. And the paint job on the figure just looks horrendous to me. It's one of the ugliest ones. I just really don't like how the figure came out at all. No new head sculpt. There's just absolutely nothing new with this thing except for more added bad paint applications and oh god this figure really just bummed me out man so i like the novelty of the x-men animated figures but i'm just not happy with this one 
Number seven goes to Agent Everett Ross. Why did they make this figure? I mean, we just gotten an Agent Ross, and it's not like that far. That figure was hard to come by. I mean, we all got one, didn't we? It. It's not a figure that went up high in the aftermarket, so I don't know why they did this. I did use the newer head sculpt uh, to put on display just out of principle, but I am just bummed out that they went ahead and made this figure. They didn't give him any of the upgraded parts. That would have at least made sense to me. So it just looked like a, a cheap reuse of a figure, and it just really bums me out that they, they re-released him again like this. It's just a big-time bummer. Number six goes to the animated Mr. Sinister. I'm sorry, I misspoke. I thought I said that Jean Grey was my least favorite animated figure. Uh, but no, uh, this one, oh my goodness. And I think it hurts a little bit more with this Mr. Sinister because I think the body mold and the figure itself, especially the first version, came out looking really cool. But this one, oh man, the cell shading paint apps are just the absolute worst in my opinion. They're just all over the place. And I just feel like the color doesn't match. I don't know what, they could have gone with black black over the dark blue that would have looked a little better maybe but either way just the application of it just like smeared you know sludgy caca smeared on the figure it bums me out man <laughs> And number five, it goes to the Hatatsurazi, and what a horrible misrepresentation of the character, right? Or the soldiers, anyway. I mean, God, they, they didn't include any of the militaristic aspects. No goggles or proper weaponry or accessories to go along with him. So far off to the point where I just disregarded having the Hatatsurazi and just went with a White Wolf custom, which you can see over here. I painted one of the Black Panther capes and put it on this figure. So yeah, he's not even going to serve the purpose of the character he was intended to be. The figure is going to just be somebody else. And the number four spot goes to the Rintra Build-A-Figure. This would be higher up on the list if I didn't think the figure was actually okay. Like the execution of the articulation and the sculpt of the figure... I think is actually pretty good, but the lack of presence of this character in the Multiverse of Madness movie and the inaccurate color scheme of his attire, he's supposed to be blue, and he doesn't look enough like the comic version to really make it feel like a comic figure to me. I don't know, man. I was thinking I could prob probably do that, but I, I, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this thing now. And I would have loved to have had, like, you know, the, the Dark Powers Doctor Strange at the end of that movie instead of a Build-A-Figure. But it's a whole Build-A-Figure wasted on a character that was barely in the movie. Yes, Hasbro, take your time with those Quantumania figures. Let, let's wait on those. You guys go watch the movie and then make your figures, and I'll be ready to pick them up if they look dope. <laughs> I'm giving it to the animated Hobgoblin, which I once owned, but have sold by now. So, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty bad. Owned it, and then I sold it. Oh, this figure pisses me off, dude. It's just so frustrating. Uh, I, I just wish that they had gone with a more animated look if they wanted to do that, or if they're going to re-release this figure, make it look a little bit more like the comic versions, but yeah, I was just really bummed out with this figure, and they didn't update the glider at all, I just feel like they could have done more with this, and there's just no reason for me to have it in my collection, I actually really liked the Toy Biz Hobgoblin figure, and I thought their first, or Hasbro's first Hobgoblin was pretty cool, but this one right here, I feel like they took away uh, some of the characters, they could have at least given them the po pointy toes, I I'm just not happy with the way this figure came out, and... I once had it, got rid of it. I've gotten into the uncharted territory of figures that I don't own. And this is the retro-carded Loki figure, which I had no desire to pick up at all whatsoever. So I just didn't need to get this figure. Uh, the Scarlet Witch and the Falcon retro-carded figures have at least different costume designs to them. Now, I know this retro Loki did come with a new head sculpt, but it's not a cooler looking head sculpt than the one that the first version had. Like, I, I'd still want to go with the smiling head. So, it literally offers nothing new. Comes with Drax daggers, which don't fit the character in my eyes. So, yeah, there was no reason for me to ever pick up this figure. Uh, the Scarlet Witch figure, I did pick up later on. The Falcon figure, I might get. But this this Loki is just one that I have no interest in buying ever. And at number one, I'm giving it to the Cosmic 
Cube Loki 2-pack. And this is another one that I did not pick up. Two Lokis right here in the top three. Now, these do count as different characters in my eye. I don't try to repeat characters on my list, but we have an MCU Loki, and then this, and then we also have a comic book Loki, so, you know, they, they count as being different for me. And, uh, th yeah, there's just nothing about the Loki figure itself that was selling me enough to spend the money on getting another Cosmic Cube. And I did find a comparison of the Cosmic Cubes and the older one that I already have just looks better than the new version. So, like, wh like what are we talking about? Like, 60 bucks or something for a Cosmic Cube that doesn't look as cool and for a Loki figure that I'm not that desperate to get. You know what I mean? I already have a variant Loki figure as it is, so there's just no reason for me to pick up this two-pack set. I mean, maybe I'll get the Loki figure loose later on at some point, but for real, I mean, there's no real reason for me to pick up this two-pack set, spend any money on it, especially 60-plus dollars, man. Ah! So disappointing uh, that I never even picked it up. Yeah. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, show some love to the channel by hitting that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more videos coming your way. And I hope you enjoyed the top 10 video. I know we're not all going to have the same top 10 list. And to be honest with you, as a content creator these days, it's a little scary voicing your opinions because people get very tribal and it's all or nothing, right? Like, if I liked a figure that you didn't like, oh, that means I'm a big-time shill. Or if I disliked a figure that you really love, oh, I'm a big-time hater. And it's just kind of wild these days. But most of us live in this gray area, and I hope you guys join me. And I'm not saying just agree with all the stuff that I feel or think, you know? Like, you guys have your own thoughts, and... I respect your opinion, and I hope you respect mine. It's just become more and more rare these days. But yeah, that was my top 10. I, I am bummed out, and I gotta say, 2022 did feel worse than 2021 for Marvel Legends, and I'm hoping that 2023 is going to be a little better. Uh, I get happy over having new characters in my display. Yeah, I have emotional attachments to them. A little bit more so with the Darwin figure because I really liked Darwin in my X Factor comics. So I immediately was stoked to add him to the shelf. I have a shelf spot for him that was waiting for a Darwin, you know? So I'm happy. And same thing with Sleepwalker. I'm, I'm happy to add the characters. Just bummed out of, over the execution of those characters. Let me know what you guys think. And if you want to follow me on social media, you can follow me over on Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, TikTok, and on whatnot. And I'll catch you guys later. Peace. Hey, new Sharpness Prime videos. Hey, you should click one. Yeah, click on one of them. Or subscribe if you haven't. Shot, we 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 shot,